This screencast is going to look at audio lex, your first question from your reading week activities, focusing on activity based costing and activity based management. So again, as before, you should read thoroughly through the question, look at the requirements first, and then let that inform you when you're reading down to the question. And it's a good practice to get into some sort of routine or some sort of approach to highlighting well, that's a relevant piece of information. Why am I told that? Just to make sure you come back to it towards the end of the exam. Because under exam pressure, you'll be amazed the amount of things you forget if you don't make sure you set a reminder in some way on your exam paper. So again, I'm not going to go through the whole question. I assume you've done that for time purposes. And we're going to start in the first part A. Prepare a summary of the overall cost structure in absolute and relative terms for audio lex based information provided above and comment on this cost structure. Again, if anyone has done OLATA before we did it in class, we would have asked for a similar type of requirement. So part A is the cost structure. So first we look at well, what are the total direct costs. The total direct costs here are 4 million plus 3.5 plus 1.750. So total direct costs are 9.25 million. That's perfect. We know that from the question. So overheads. So how much is the total overheads? We are told here total indirect costs are 14.28. And you'll notice that that is the sum of your machining, the quality testing, your customer management, and your admin support. So all of these added together. So 14.280. So adding them together means your total cost, total cost base, based on the information provided is 23,530. And you're asked to capsule, you're asked to one calculate in absolute terms, which you've done, and relative terms. So what percentage of your cost base is direct cost, and what percentage is overheads? So you can see here we've based on that 39% of direct cost, while 61% our overhead. So that's the first part and you also have to comment on that. So then good students will go on and they'll say, well actually overheads is a large proportion of your cost base and that would signify that it's important to make sure that these are traced directly to the relevant cost objects. In this instance you have three different types of hearing aids. Likewise it's also important and suggest that this may or this would suggest that ABC could be useful to Audiolex given the high proportion of indirect costs in their cost base. So again, you're really just setting the scene, what type of cost base do they have, and is ABC, or the ability to trace overheads accurately to products, important for this company? And in this case it is, because it's 61%. So relatively easy one to start off with. Uh, part B, calculate the cost per unit and profit per unit for each of Audiolex's products based on the current traditional costing system in place. So again, we've come across this before, cost per unit and profit, based on traditional products. So make sure you focus on that and. You need to do cost and profit. So first we look at each of the products here. Aid Light, Aid Extra, and Aid Super. And we look at direct cost first. In total terms, 3, 5, no, not. The next total cost, oh sorry, that's 4 million. 3.5 is 8 extra, 4 million, and 1.750. And just to confirm that that's the total, you can add them all. And that matches what we have up there. Uh, we say number of units. Number of units for Audiolex, we're told here, is 20,000. Number of units here is 14,000. A number of units here is 5,000. So we want to get the cost per unit. Now, based on our information here, well, firstly, we know we're going to have direct cost per unit. We know we're going to have an overhead allocation. And that will get us to total cost per unit. So sometimes we may have two or three direct costs in terms of labor, in terms of materials, but in this instance they're all lumped together into one direct cost. So the direct cost per unit is straightforward. It's your direct costs for that product because you're giving them over the number of units. 
So 200, 250, and 350. So it's literally your direct cost divided by the number of units. The difficulty arises then when, well, what is the overhead per unit? And how are we allocating that 14.28 million to each of the products? And you're told here the current costing system allocates overheads in proportion to direct costs. So for every year of direct cost, you have to allocate some proportion of overheads to make sure you've allocated it out. So if we come over here, we know total overheads is from up here 14.28 million. We know total direct costs are 9.25 million. Therefore, the overhead rate per euro direct costs. So what you're saying, it's not looking at direct labour hours or anything. Now you're looking at the actual direct costs. So for every euro of direct costs, you need to allocate 1.543 of overheads. So that's what your overhead absorption rate or your overhead allocation rate. So you need to understand that and go back for every euro of direct costs you will allocate one euro fifty four of overheads to each product. So the overhead is two hundred times the one point five four. So we're allocating now about three oh nine so three oh eight point eight three oh nine we'll round down to eight light, same for two fifty and same for eight extra is two fifty times your one point five four three and eight super is one seven or should I say five thousand three fifty times one point five four three. So that'll give you the total cost per unit. You've now allocated out the direct cost and the overhead giving you the total cost per unit here. A is 509, total cost here is 636, and total cost here is 890. <coughs> if students do want to check have they allocated all the overheads, well, you can just say number of units for each, 8 light, 8 extra, 8 super, and we know the number of units are over here, so it's just a good sense check. The number of units for each is 20,000, 14,000, 5,000. Overhead per unit. Well, we calculate these here 309, 386, and 540. And just multiply them out. We said 20,000 units at 309 per unit. That gets us about 6 million. Same for here, and same for here. So if we, add, if we sum them up, we'll hopefully get back to our 14.28 million. And we do. That's how we accurately allocated all the overhead to each of the products using a proportion of direct costs. So the more direct costs you use, the more overhead you're allocated. Whether that's a good method or not, that's to be decided. And particularly in light of our knowledge up here that direct costs are actually a smaller proportion of the base. So they may not be a useful cost driver. And good students would pick up on that point. So now we're looking at sales price per unit. Because remember you're asked for cost per unit and profit per unit. So this is 750, this is 1000, and this is 1300. All those figures are coming from up here, your sales price per unit in that box. And that gets you back to profit per unit. Profit is sales minus cost. So for every unit you sell at 8 light, you're making 241 profit, 634 profit for 8 extra, and 410 profit for 8 super. So come back, that is our part B, profit and cost per unit using the traditional costing system. So now we look for part C, is the same approach before, as before looking at cost per unit, but now we are looking at it from an activity based costing perspective. So instead of now looking at the overhead on a simple volume based cost driver, you need to allocate it based on activity based costing. So we're going to look at bringing in a table based on activity. Let's just bring in this table here. Oops, Let's take out these. No borders. So you have each of them. We know that the sum of these 
already makes your 14280, so that's confirmed. And also now we have our different cost drivers. So the first thing we need to do is what is the cost of each cost driver? So what's the cost of one setup? We know all setups or the machining cost is four million. We know the number of setups, so we now guess well what's the total number of setups? We'll add them together. Total number of setups is six hundred. Total number of inspections is four seventy. Service calls is forty four thousand and interactions is fifty thousand. Now some students will have mentioned in class that why don't we just skip it and look at the proportion of each? But you need to figure out the cost cost per cost driver because this will be useful when we're talking about you'll see towards the end in part I think it is part F of this question we're talking about activity based management you need these insights into what is the cost per driver so the cost for each setup is 4 million over 600 setups 6800 the cost for each inspection is 4.6 or 4680 the cost for each service call is 68 euro and the cost for each interaction would be 5 million over 50,000 interactions. So based on that then we know the cost of each cost driver, we know how much each product uses those drivers, therefore we can now accurately allocate out each of the overheads using this basis. So again students should do up a neat table, 8 light, 8 extra, 8 super, and then on the other side you have the allocations of machining, quality testing, customer management and admin support. We know each each aid light product takes a hundred setups, well in total they take a hundred setups times the cost per setup is six thousand eight hundred. Same point for aid extra, they take two fifty at six thousand eight hundred and aid super takes two fifty at six thousand eight hundred. Likewise we've taken here. And you can sum them across to make sure the whole 4.84 4 million is added up, and it is. That's the total, just as a sense check. Same approach for quality testing. Aid light products in total took 100, 200 inspections, and each inspection cost 4,680. And you can allocate the 150 for aid extra and the 120 for aid soup. So again, I'm not doing too worried about the calculations. You come back and you can sense check those. It's for you to understand where the logic is. I'm doing the same for customer management. 15,000 times 68. 68 there. And doing that across. I'll just bring them down. And finally, admin support 20,000 times your 100. And bringing those across. So again, go back, make sure you're comfortable with those calculations for time purposes and not putting too much on them because it's the same repetitive. Just as a sense check, we'll make sure that the quality testing is 2.2, correct. Sum of those is 3 million, which is correct. And finally, the sum of those is 5 million for admin support. Now what you have to do is bring it to a per unit basis. So the total overhead allocated to 8 light is 4.6 million. Total overhead allocated to 8 extra is 5.1 million. And the total alloc overhead allocated to 8 super is 4.4 million. And again, the sum of those should give me my 14.28, which it does. But now we want it on a per unit basis, because remember, we're asked for profit, cost per unit, and profit per unit on a per unit basis. So the number of units we know from before, we get from up here, 20,000. 14,000 and 5,000. And now we have overhead per unit is nearly the simple allocation. 4.6 million total overhead allocated to aid light over the number of units means the overhead here is 231.9. The overhead here is 5.1 million over 14,000, which is 371. And the overhead here is 888.7. So again, the first approach always in ABC is you work on a totals basis to allocate out the total overhead and then you work back towards an overhead per unit basis based on the number of units you have. So we'll now use this information here, the overhead per unit, to fill in a little cost box like here. Direct cost plus overhead per unit 
getting to a profit per unit. So now that we have the overhead per unit, we now add in the direct cost per unit. Because remember, this direct cost per unit doesn't change depending on whether you use traditional or, or ABC because you already know what the direct cost is. You can trace it to each unit. And finally, then that gives you total cost per unit. So total cost per unit here is your overhead plus your direct cost and likewise over and above. So now you have the direct cost, or the total cost, should I say. The same approach before, remember, you asked for cost per unit and profit per unit. So watch those multiple requirements. Sales price is 750 Scoop up here. 1000 and 1300 And now we're looking at the profit per unit. Here is the sales price minus your cost 318, 378, and 61. So that's part C. You're asked for cost per unit and profit per unit. Part D is discuss the reasons. This is kind of the narrative around it. And this is really where good students can distinguish themselves by actually saying that you understand why there's a difference and you can, act, you can outline then the implications of that difference. So, what are the reasons for the difference between B and C? and implications for product mix and competitive strategy. So typically I think it's best practice here just to do out a quick table and say look for traditional what's the cost per unit profit per unit and likewise for ABC. Just so you kind of give it a one link to the part of the question so you can see it all on one page or one table what exactly the cost and profits are and I do that across the top so the cost per unit here for aid light and traditional you can get from up here 509 and we can pull them across and the profit per unit based on traditional we've calculated already 241, 364 and 410 so it just looks a bit professional and it's easy then to cross reference or reference numbers in your narrative because you have them in a neat table likewise here 431 across and the profit per unit across. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can clearly see, first thing is here, well, what's the difference? Well, clearly it looks like Aid Light was over costed. Traditional cost said it was 509, but actually the real cost using ABC is only 4, 431. It looks like Aid Super was actually under costed. We said the cost in traditional was 890 but actually when you take account of activity based costing and its use of um, cost drivers the actual cost is 1238 and that naturally has an impact on what the actual profitability is so it suggests Aid Light is a lot more profitable than you thought whereas Aid Super is a lot less profitable it's just about profitable with a profit of 61 per unit and then Aid Extra in the middle it's a small bit um, over costed but nothing major. There's not a major difference. The major differences are between Aid Light and Aid Super. And if you go back to here, it suggests well actually if you compare and contrast, Aid Super had a very small portion of direct costs, but they've also a large use in relative terms for five thousand units. So they only do five thousand units yet they use the most machining or the equal most machining use a good bit of admin support, they use a good chunk of customer management. So relative terms, when these are high volume, these are low volume but they use a lot of cost drivers. So that suggests that the traditional system will under allocate overhead because it's based on direct cost. Whereas when you split it down, you look at each activity, super uses a lot of setups, uses a good few interactions given that it is only 5,000 units, suggests that it should be allocated more overhead. And when it is allocated more overhead, you get a more reflective um, cost of about 1,238. 1, and the best students will also know that, well, what's the implications? You've now explained the basis that super uses more um, cost drivers, whereas Aid Light uses less compared to the portion of direct cost. Then go back and say, well, what are the implications? Well, one of the implication is Aid Light appears to be overcosted and probably there there's an opportunity to reduce price and still have the same profit margin. 
whereas Aid Super seems to have a lower profit than you thought. So either then you're going to have to look at can you increase that price in the market, so the pricing implications. Or alternatively, and you're asked for this, what about the product mix? Well, it may suggest, should we stop doing the super one because it's so costly? Unless we can increase price to make a more, pro more profitable product, it may not be worthwhile having that in your product portfolio. Finally, the best students will link that to the narrative. I purposely put in a narrative here. We said, Audio lets the senior management team have been pleasantly surprised with the continuing success of super product that has consistently surpassed budget. However, the opposite can be said for Aid Light, which continues to be, uh, which recent performance continues to be poor and consistently behind target. Good students were linked to, well, actually, it's easy enough for Aid Super to be consistently surpassing budget because it appears to be underpriced. Because if you look at here, we thought the cost based on traditional was only 890 therefore we thought we're making 410 profit per unit but actually the cost is nearly it's nearly break even therefore we've actually underpriced in the market likewise the opposite is we've overpriced aid light in the market we thought it cost us 509 it's actually only costing us about 430 therefore there's an opportunity there to reduce cost so again good students will bring in that narrative using the numbers as a basis for talking about um, the narrative piece and discussing the differences and the implications of those. Okay, so that would be a probably a maybe could be it up to a ten marker in the exam. Part E, it, this is the type of a five marker that I expect. It's a difficult one. Students, you need to understand what you're supposed to, you need to understand what you've done, and particularly in terms of what margin is and how to calculate it. So I've asked students, assuming the ABC system is implemented. Alright, so assuming these are the costs and profits. Determine the price required to be charged for aid light, so the aid light product only, to receive to achieve the same margin percentage as under the traditional costing. And comment on your findings. So again, two parts two parts. One is what price is required for aid light to achieve the same margin as under the traditional one? And then comment on your findings. So again, Make sure students break this down into small steps. But first is what is the margin percentage under traditional? So work off that basis. So you're essentially saying, look, we know that actually we got our pricing wrong. The profit per unit now is not this. It's actually more more reflective here of 318. Because your actually your costs are now um, particularly for aid light, they're over costed using traditional basis. So what is the margin? Well, the margin percentage, that is equal to profit, profit over your revenue. So in this instance, the margin percentage for aid light under the traditional, because remember, you're looking for the traditional system first. The profit per unit is 241. Over the sales price means the margin you're making on that product, or what you thought you did based on the traditional system, is 32 percent. Okay. Now, just out of interest, compare that to the margin percentage under ABC. So actually, the margin percentage under ABC is the difference is you have the same sales price, but you're making a different profit. So the profit you're making under ABC is 318 over 750. So actually, you're making 10 percent more margin. You're making 42 percent. And the question asked you here. What can the sales price be to achieve the same margin for aid light as you achieved under the traditional rule? So if ABC is implemented, you make 42. But they're saying, look, we're happy with 32. What does the price have to be to make a 32? So what you need to work back at is, if margin percentage is 32%, then the cost percentage, well, they must be, 1 minus 32%, which is 68%. So your cost is 68% of sales price, and your margin needs to be 32% of sales price. So based on that, we know our ABC cost per unit for aid light is 431.9, and we then know our required sales price. Well, if this is cost of 68%, our sales price, which is 100%, would be 431.9 divided 
divided by 68%. Alternatively, what you can do is 431.9 over 68 times 100. So you're essentially saying, I know what the cost is. I want to make sure my cost is 68% because that would make my margin 32%. So you get to your same. That's just rounding because this is a more detailed figure, 67.83. So you're told the sales price, if we implement ABC, we get a sales price of 636.77. And just to double check, what's the margin using that sales price? Well, the margin will be 636.7 minus the ABC cost. The margin, or should I say profit per unit, will be 204.82. And the margin percentage will be 204 over 636 which is your 32 percent which is what you're required that's the first part so again that would only be for a three or four marker to make sure you see the students the good students and um, work down through it again but don't worry you can still get the first part by calculating the margin itself to understand that basis the final thing is to comment on your findings and the comment here will be well the price can fall from 750 to 636 and you will still make the same margin or same profit uh, as you did under the traditional system. So it suggests the con under the traditional system, the profit was overcosted and therefore overpriced in the market. Therefore, you can drop the price by price drop of one minus six three six point seven seven over seven fifty. Fifth, fall can buy 15% by, and you'll still make the same margin. So that is an interesting perspective and it links back here to part D of the implications for your product mix. Your audio light was overpriced in the market, that's why it was behind budget and you can actually drop your price by 15% and you'll still have the same margin as you expect on the traditional system. Okay, so that was an, a difficult enough part of the question. It would be probably for a 5 marker but again don't worry if you don't get all of it but you will at least be able to calculate the margin and work with your basis from there. The final part of this then is F. This is a narrative piece. It will be from between 10 and 15 marks. We're asked the management team of AudioLex have asked you to prepare a brief memo. So again, important to look at a memo structure. You need to have a to, a from, and what's it about read. Okay, so good structure, professional, a good tone. It describes the objective and nature of ABM. So what is activity-based management about? Where does it come from? So it looks at the organization as a set of activities and it seeks to manage those activities. It uses activity-based costing management or costing information as the basis for that management. And don't forget, there's then two types of activity-based management. You have operational and then you have strategic. So there's two points here, describing the objective in nature and illustrate the type of insights and benefits. So again, there's a fairly detailed solution that will go up to this. But points I want the students to cop onto or to look and mention is, well, one, this is the point here. For an operational ABM perspective, you can see here cost drivers. For every setup you have, it's costing you 6,800. Therefore, if you can reduce the number of setups required, you can save a significant amount of money. Likewise with the number of inspections. That is looking from an operational perspective. Likewise, for a strategic perspective, we've already looked at it. There's pricing implications from looking at activity-based management, activity-based costing principles. Some of our products have been over-costed. Some of our products have been over or under-costed, resulting in pricing discrepancies in the market, which are impacting on our performance. That is looking at it from a strategic perspective, and then looking at, well, should we drop some of our product lines? How should we look at our pricing and our competitive strategy in the marketplace? So what I want the students, and one point I want students to pick up, and you'll notice and pay particular attention to the bottom of that solution is, it, there's a clear attempt in my solution, suggest a solution to answer the facts of the case. So bringing in relevant facts from the case. You're not too worried about the specifics of, do you know an in-depth knowledge of the industry, i.e. the hearing aids. But I want you to make an attempt to use the information of the case to form your answer. So relate it back to the facts of the case. So again, I said 10 to 15 marks for that narrative. So again, that is a exam standard question in terms of activity-based costing, activity-based management. We would have covered it in a half an hour. 
you would have talked to me about an hour for that in the quest in the uh, exam setting. So again, a bit longer. So that was audio lex reading me question covering activity based costing and activity based math.